In this video, I want to introduce you to some position function terminology. These are terms that are used over and over again and kind of assume that you already know them uh, because they're not introduced very well all the time. So I'm going to stick to one dimension to keep things simple. And so in one dimension, I have some function which I call x of t. And so for some time, which I'll say in seconds, this function is going to give me some position along the x-axis. And so here's an example that I have here for some time t, it'll give me a position x. In fact, it's a technically a vector function of time. It gives me a, a vector of some magnitude along the x-axis pointing in either the positive or negative direction. So the first thing I want to uh, introduce you to is what I call the initial condition. The initial condition of this function is defined to be the value of the function when time is equal to zero. So the initial condition would be the function evaluated at zero. This is often given its own notation, which I'll call x sub naught, x sub zero. It's referred to as uh, x naught. So this, this is a variable now that represents the value of this function uh, evaluated at the time is equal to zero. So for the example we have here above, I have, uh, if x for this function, x evaluated at 0 gives me 20. And so I would call x naught, the initial condition of this function, to be 20 meters, since that was the units of this problem. Okay, so that's, that's sort of the initial condition. Often we are interested in two points of time, in two points in time, which are not necessarily where the time is equal to 0. So another thing we want to be familiar with, we'll call uh, our initial time and our final time. So I'm interested in two points in time where they're not ne one's not necessarily zero. So I'll call my initial time t and I'll give it a subscript i, meaning it's initial, and my final time I'll give that a uh, T, and I'll give it a subscript F for final. Now, th this is a uniform. A, lo a lot of times, the initial time might be given by T sub 1 for, say, like your first time, and your second time might be uh, T with a subscript 2 for second time. I, I mean, there's, th there's no particular notation that's uniform. Um, in fact, as you set up problems, you can use any any time any uh, notation you like. I sort of prefer this initial time and final time, uh, then t sub i t sub f to identify what I mean. So, in let's say for example, if my initial time was two, then t uh, initial would be equal to two, and if my final time was five seconds, then t sub f would be equal to five. The other thing I want to introduce you to is delta t. So when we write delta t, we often mean the time difference between two points in time, and so that time difference is going to be t final minus t initial, which in this case would be three seconds. So we have some initial time, some final time, and then if we need it, some time difference. Okay, so if we are interested in some initial and final time, what we're interested in is the positions at those times. So we have then what we'll call the initial position, which would be the value of our position function evaluated at the initial time. So note, it, it's not unlike sort of what we have here where sort of the initial condition. Uh, don't get these completely confused. A lot of times our initial position will be at t is equal to zero, but it's not necessarily always the case, but it's the same idea. I have some initial time, t sub i, and I'm gonna evaluate this, this function at that time and it's gonna give me my initial position. And then I might have some final position, which is going to be this function evaluated at t final. So I mean, this is a lot of uh, writing here, and so I might like to use a, a shorthand notation for that. So I often will give that, say, x 
with a subscript i. And my final position might be an x with a subscript f. So this is now a symbol, but these symbols mean this here. This symbol means the function x of t evaluated, evaluated at my initial time, where this means my position function evaluated at my final time. And then, since these are uh, positions, at two points in time, we might be interested in the position difference, which I call delta x, which is going to be the final position minus the initial position. So if we sort of do this with the example we had before, if I have this function, my initial position, which is x evaluated at my initial time, which is 2, well, evaluating this at 2 gives me 0. My final position is x evaluated at my final time, which is x5, which is minus 30. And so I have my uh, x final, which is minus 30, minus my x initial, which is 0. And so the position difference is negative 30 meters. It's a magnitude of 30 meters, and it's a vector pointing in the negative x direction. OK, and so this is really just a, I, to introduce you to this, these terminologies. If I have some position function, I can identify the initial condition, which I call x0, the function evaluated at t is equal to 0. And then, if I'm interested in some initial time and some, well, I'll call it t sub i, some final time, I can calculate a time difference. I can evaluate initial and final positions, and then calculate position differences.